On the show in wheel spin, we drive the recently launched Mercedes Maybach. On the launch pad, we have a look at the new Mercedes GLE. Quicker presence, the quicker car guide. And on the road, we drive the Fiat Aventura to Barog in Himachal. The car that I drive today is a car which has defined terms like super luxury, a car which has sat on top of the heap as far as luxury cars go, a car known for its premiumness, sophistication and luxury the world over for a very, very long time. The Maybach, the Mercedes Maybach, I should say, and Mercedes recently launched this in India. Let's have a look as to how good this new Maybach is. Maybach, a company owned by the father-son team of Willem and Karl Maybach made their first car way back in 1921 and after a checkered history of almost nine decades whereby they had been acquired by Daimler. They were discontinued in 2013 but then Daimler had a change of heart and announced the revival of the Maybach brand once again in November 2014 and we got a first glimpse of the production ready Maybach at the Geneva Motor Show earlier this year in March and now India gets his first new Maybach. I guess if you are a Maybach owner, you will probably never drive this car. You will let your chauffeur have all the fun. But then if you happen to be someone like me who has to drive everything and anything that's got wheels on it, then probably you will slide in behind the wheels. And if you do that, you will be taken by surprise. The Maybach here is a big car, measures almost 5.5 meters and not only the length but also she weighs little over 2.8 tons and that's a lot of weight for a car, even if it's a big one. And the engine here that is trusted with the job of hauling this Maybach is a massive V12 6 litre which churns out 530 brake horsepower and a very very healthy 830 newton meters of torque. And in fact it does a wonderful job of driving the Maybach. The engine here is smooth, it's very refined and in spite of the weight, in spite of the size, it still manages to get the Maybach up to the 100 kilometer mark in just five seconds and that's really impressive. There is no sound that comes from the engine, there are no vibrations, so when you're driving it you get the feeling as if you're just gliding. It's really a nice feeling to drive this car here. The Maybach comes with magic body control which enables a set of onboard cameras to read the road surface and adjust the suspension accordingly for a smooth ride. And you also get different driving modes and much to my surprise you get a sports mode here as well. I really wonder if anybody will ever use the sports mode here and use the paddle shifts. After all this is a super luxury car and you get enough performance as it is from the engine. Anyway, that's an option that Mercedes has given you and possibly you will find some speed freaks really using it. And for driver aid, you pretty much get everything. Park assist, night vision, 360 degree camera and of course a head up display. And the surprising thing is that in spite of being a big car, she is really easy to drive. The steering is really light and the brakes are super effective and once you step on the gas, of course you have abundance of power. So overall, even you drive the Maybach, occasionally you will still be amply rewarded because the experience would be nice. She's got everything to make the drive really enjoyable, plenty of power and ease of driving. Of course, one thing I will not talk about here is the fuel efficiency. After all, if you buy a car which costs as much as this, you would be really silly to talk about fuel efficiency. So this time around, I'm going to skip the issue of fuel efficiency completely and focus rather on driving this car.
When you step inside this car here, you get exactly what you would have expected. Pure, unadulterated luxury. The seats come wrapped in the finest quality Nappa leather with hand stitching on it. And of course, they have both air conditioning and heating on them. And the fascia here is really aesthetically done with a combination of pure wooden veneer as well as some leather on it. And there's a huge display here which pretty much gives you all the information that you need. And overall, if you look at the interiors here, you realize that this is a car which reeks of luxury and which in fact kind of sets the benchmark for luxury cars all across the globe. But it still manages to carry over some of the Mercedes idiosyncrasies. After all, it's a Mercedes brand, so why not? What you find here is a little analog clock right on the center here. And of course, if you look at the interiors here, they look very, very familiar with what the S-Class offers. So in that case, some of you might have a problem with it, thinking that you are driving an S-Class while as you are driving a Maybach and you have paid a whole lot more money for this one. So I feel there should have been a bit of differentiation, but no, sadly it's the same brand, so it's all standard looks, except for the size, of course. But another thing that you will find very reassuring if you do happen to buy the Maybach is the fact that this is really high on safety. This car comes with 12 airbags. But honestly, I haven't really seen a car which encourages you to spend more time on the back seat than this one. It's exactly what you need after a hard day's work. And believe it or not, I have been working hard so time for me to put my feet up, literally, and take in some hot stone massage, which the seats are eager to deliver. Time for a break, maybe? If you are somebody who is used to business class travel, then you will find the interiors of this Maybach really something very, very familiar. It's got everything to make your travel really comfortable and very enjoyable. You got your personal stereo system, you got nice leather wrapped, not only leather wrapped, it's Napa leather wrapped, I should say, extremely good quality seats, which are actually extendable and they let you stretch your legs very well. Then, of course, you have this foldable tray which will let you work. And I'm also told that the interiors of this Maybach is actually the quietest interior in any car. And the ride quality is simply superb. You don't feel any aberrations of the road coming in here and disturbing your peace. So no matter whether you want to just chill out, relax, or you want to work on the way, this car is absolutely perfect. The Maybach sits on the same W222 platform which is used by the Mercedes S-Class. But the wheelbase is about 8 inches longer than even the long wheelbase S-Class, which makes it the longest car in the Mercedes portfolio. The Maybach measures in at 5.435 mm and the wheelbase is 3.365 mm, which is actually longer than the entire length of some hatchbacks that are sold in the country. All this might make the Maybach a difficult proposition to squeeze into a tight parking slot. But what it does is give the car a regal presence which you just can't miss. Now let's see who are the kind of guys who will be actual customers of this car. Now I'll give you an example. Suppose you're the kind of a guy who does a lot of intercity travel. I'll give you an example. Suppose you travel from Delhi to Chandigarh or from Bombay to Pune on a regular basis. Now, if I were to take a business class flight, let me check the fares. It shows me a fare of 22,000 rupees round trip between Delhi and Chandigarh, a distance of 300 kilometers. The flight lasts 45 minutes only. Now, if I were to do things differently, I would take this Maybach, I would drive down to Chandigarh, and the advantage I have is I can leave on my time, I can come back on my time, and I will obviously avoid obnoxious company. I have my personal stereo system, I have nice leather wrapped reclining seats and I can work at peace and no one to disturb me. So if you're the kind of a guy who loves road travel, loves to do things on his own times, loves privacy and of course values comfort, then this car is far better than going business class in any airlines. You do things in style and you do things in the lap of luxury, this is one car which is really, really meant for long distance travel. And then what pleases me immensely is the attention to detail as you can expect in a car like this. 
even the seat belts here are padded and the holder in which the seat belts go in is illuminated and then of course you have mood lighting seven colors to choose from and you can also control the dimming levels so talk about setting the right mood this car will do the job perfectly for you The Maybach here, true to its positioning, is a car which actually gives you everything that you might look for in a super luxury car. Loads of space, plenty of features, and of course, it's big on safety and very drivable too. The V12 motor makes it so. The only thing that might go against it is the fact that this might appear a bit similar to the S-Class that Mercedes offer. But then this nameplate here puts it in a separate league. And the fact that she is really expensive is the reason why many people might not be able to buy it. The S600 here is what is expensive because this is imported right out of Germany as a CVU. But Mercedes is actually offering a solution. They are giving the locally assembled S500 Maybach at a much lower price. Whole rupees 1 crore less than this one. And that should be an attractive buy. If only good things of life went so expensive, or the other way around, if most of us were millionaires, chances are we would have seen a lot of these around. But sadly, at rupees 2.6 crores, or what it costs to park a Maybach in the garage, can buy most people a decent piece of real estate. And this is what I guess most people opt for over a Maybach. Coming up next, on the launch pad, we have a look at the new Mercedes GLE and quicker presence the quicker car guy. Mercedes-Benz India this week launched the GLE in India to reinforce their presence in the luxury SUV category. The GLE will be the replacement for the current M-Class globally. The GLE designed as an SUV will be capable of off-roading with a high ground clearance and a powerful motor but at the same time with its refined interiors and a long feature list will provide the much needed luxury quotient which Mercedes is so famous for. The GLE will be sold in two variants, the 250D and the more powerful 350D. Both the variants will be locally produced in Pune. The 250D will be priced at Rs 58.9 lakhs while as the 350D will set you back by Rs 69.9 lakhs. Vishal Setia from Gwalior has sent in a question. Now he wants to sell his Maruti 800 and wants to sell it to a reliable person. But he does not want to share too many personal details online. Vishal, you can opt for quicker cars. On the quicker app, post a free ad and just choose number privacy option after filling in all relevant details. Buyers will contact you via chat and you can choose to share your number whenever you deem necessary. In case you start getting unwanted messages, you also have the option of blocking such people. And thus, you can choose who you want to sell your car to without any hassle. Coming up next, on the road, we drive the Fiat Aventura to Barog in Himachal.
After spending a lovely weekend in the Morni Hills, which is actually situated in the state of Haryana, but sits close to the borders of Himachal Pradesh, I decided to move on and explore Himachal a bit more. And my first stop here is the quaint old town of Barog with pretty views. And what Barog does is offer you a base to explore the surrounding areas. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. And to take me there, I of course have the trusted Fiat Aventura, which has been a really nice companion last weekend, and I hope to drive her again this weekend and have some fun. The Fiat Aventura here is a car which is really easy to like. It gives you everything that you need in a car which you are supposed to travel in over long distance. Number one is space, it offers you lots of space. Number two is convenience features and comfort, it gives you plenty of that. It's like a premium sedan which has everything in terms of infotainment, in terms of practicality such as multifunction buttons. It also comes with airbags so you feel safe driving it. And what really comes in handy the most is the boot space and it does offer you enough to carry your weekend bag in. Barog is a small village situated at a height of 1680 meters above sea level on the Delhi Shimla Highway and 8 kilometers from the town of Solon. It is named after an engineer, Barog, who was commissioned with the task of building the railway tunnel near Barog. Today, Barog is a place which is connected well to different parts of Himachal. And if you start from here, you can explore nearby places like Jatoli and Ashani Ghat. When you start driving this aventure on a twisty mountain road, you soon realize how well the suspension has been sprung. In fact, Fiat has achieved a very fine balance between ride comfort and handling. And as you start flinging the car around numerous turns on a nice hill road, you soon realize that this car has been really born to be driven hard. She grips the road very well, corners very confidently, so much so that you really want to push her into the corners. But of course, I'm driving on a public road, so I dare not do that. But then everything in the car really complements the driver and it begs to be driven hard. The engine in this car is of course the tried and the trusted 1.3 litre multi-jet from Fiat which does duty on many of their products and in this car it belts out 93 brake horsepower and around 200 newton meters of torque. And the good part about this engine is also that it's quite balanced out. It gives out a nice mix of power as well as fuel efficiency. And in fact, if you take the Aventura out on a long drive, you will never complain about the fuel efficiency. And that's something I like very much. And another good part about this Aventura is that if you are out on the highway on a long drive with this car, and you get a back patch of road, you don't really have to bother about it because she's got a high enough ground clearance. So the rough patches doesn't really bother this car or you for that matter. In fact, the more I drive this Aventura here, the more I get to like it. It's a car which is really good to take out on a long weekend. It's got space, it's got engine performance, it's got nice fuel efficiency and above all, it drives quite well. Jatoli is a sleepy little village with scenic views of the distant Himalayas and is also home to the Vishal Shiva temple, which draws many visitors. We wanted to start this trip on an auspicious note, so our first stop was this. It's a beautiful temple, but not a very old one. Construction started on it only in the 1980s, but today it has become a landmark for people to stop and pay their respects to Lord Shiva. And from the temple site, you get a lovely view. After this, we started to drive towards Ashani Ghat, a beautiful area some 18 kilometers away. And it's a beautiful drive too, where the Ashani River flows down from the mountains. And it is a place which offers a nice view as well as a place to have a picnic. A place which is popular both with the locals as well as the tourists.
Next to it is the new temple complex which is coming up. And even if you are not of religious bent of mind, it is still a place to make a quick stop and take in the peace and serenity and of course the lovely views of the mountains. After spending some time in the temple complex, it was time to drive some more and visit what we were told is a beautiful monastery on the Solon Rajgar Road. The Dolanji Bon Monastery, which was constructed in 1969 in true Tibetan architectural style and houses around 120 monks and is indeed a beautiful monastery. Just outside of Solon on the Rajgar Road, I stumbled upon this pretty monastery here. It's perched on top of a hill. It's called the Mendri Monastery and it's really beautiful. And as monasteries go, this is nothing but a sea of calm and peace and serenity. This is a place where you can sit for hours just doing nothing and perhaps meditating. Not only is this Menri Monastery very beautiful, but sitting on top of a hilltop has its advantages. What you get from here is a nice scenic view of the surrounding hillside. It's really very pretty from here. As you drive back to Barog after a day of exploring, you pass by one of the largest towns in Himachal. Solon spread out over the mountainside like a giant tarantula. And this is a town which will offer you more options in terms of eating, shopping as well as accommodation. But our choice was of course Barog for its quiet and peace. A place where you can just lay down on the meadow and breathe in the pine scented air. Or just watch the pretty Kalka Shimla train amble down in the valley below. A place where you can laze and relax. I had a lovely time exploring parts of Himachal I had never been to before and this Fiat Aventura that I drove is a perfect companion for a long trip like this. In fact, it has everything that it takes to be a long weekend getaway car. Lots of space, nice engine performance and of course what I like the most, great fuel economy. So all I can suggest is that even if you don't own a Fiat Aventura, get behind the wheels of whatever you own and take a trip to this part of Himachal and I'm sure you're going to like it. See you on the show next week.